Hello and welcome to a tutorial by Tony Johnson. Uh, what we're going to be creating today is a cartoon eye that can be deformed and has an aim constraint. To start off with, we need to create a nerve primitive sphere. Hitting F on my keyboard, I can focus in onto it, and pressing 6, I can turn it to smooth shade mode. Going up into our channel box, I'm going to rotate it on the X 90 degrees and rotate it on the Y negative 90. What this does is puts my start and end seam right on the uh, ground plane. So under the inputs for the nerve sphere 1, I'm going to click into that and under start sweep, I'm going to say 100 and for my end sweep I'm going to say 260. What this does is open up my eye so this is going to be the max open for my upper eyelid and the max open for my lower eyelid. After I do this I'm going to repeat the process for the inner eyelid. So going up to create nerve primitive sphere. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Rotate Y negative 90 degrees and the one more step that we need to do is we're going to change the scale X, Y, and Z to 0.9. This makes it slightly smaller so that we'll actually get a lip for our eyelid. Going into the Make Nerve Sphere 2, I'm going to change the Start Sweep to 100, the End Sweep to 260, and there we have it. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is select both the inner and the outer eyelid hold right click and go into isoparm on both holding shift I can select both the beginning edges of both the inner and the outer uh, spheres and then switching to my surfaces menu set I can come up to surfaces and then loft clicking the option box what I want to change is the section spans so if I reset this, by default it is 1. But what I want to do is change it to the number of spans that's on my nerve sphere. So I have 1, 2, and 3. So changing my spans to 3, I can now hit apply. And that will create a lofted segment with the correct number of spans. So I'm going to do this again for the lower portion. So going, selecting ice parm holding shift, selecting both. Uh, if you mess up like I did, I just created a new isoparm. You can just deselect and then do it again. And then come up here and since this is the last one that we'll be doing, I'll just hit locked, which closes the window. So after I have this, if I select both my inner and the outer eyelid, I can go into the inputs and if I just grab the end sweep I can hold down my middle mouse button and you can now see that I'm moving the inner and the outer and the eyelid stays connected. So this is how we're going to control the blink. I'm going to turn that back to 260. Alright, so now what we need to do is create a control that will be able to edit the blinking of the eyelid. So to do that, I'm going to tap into my front view. I'll zoom up a little bit so we can get a little bit uh, closer shot. Going up to Create, CV Curve Tool, Option Box. I want to make sure that my curve degree is set to one linear. After that, I can close the tool settings. And now I'm going to start creating my curve. Holding the X key, I can snap to grid. So I'm going to snap a rectangle and then continue on and create a plus for the center. It doesn't matter that the curves overlap because you won't be able to tell or see. So now that we have that, I have my box. Now I need to create a control for the upper eye and the lower eye. Lid. So I'll go back into the Create CV Curve tool. Holding X, I will snap a triangle shape. Hit Enter to finish that. G to re-enter the tool and hold down X again for the lower eyelid. 
All right, so what we need to do now is if I open up my move tool, you'll notice that the uh, tool placement is at the origin. What I want is the tool to be positioned right along the base of the curve. So if I press insert on my keyboard, I can now move its pivot point. So selecting the Y direction axis, you'll notice it'll turn yellow. I can now hold the C, which is snap to curve point, and holding my middle mouse button, I can drag left and right at the, the tip of the triangle and it will automatically snap to the base. So insert to exit that and I will do the same thing to the top. So pressing insert to enter the mode, holding C and middle mouse dragging. You'll notice that this time I didn't select the Y and you'll see that I can actually just drag it around the curve. So if you do that you can just press Control Z, make sure you select the Y axis and then hold C and snap and you'll have it at the point. So hitting insert to exit that mode. Uh, next thing I want to do is this is a little big for our eye and it's not needed so I'm going to select all three of the just created curves and I'm going to scale them down by half so 0.5. You'll notice now that our uh, guide is now the direct size of our eyeball and our arrows are a little bit offset so to fix that, I'm just going to select one, holding X, I can grab it on the Y and just snap to the beginning of each. Tapping back into my perspective, I'm going to grab all three curves and I'm just going to move it out of ways. This is just to give it a little bit of room so that it's not overlapping inside the eye. Once I have this, I want to make sure that I freeze its transformation so I don't have all these scales and the translate values. So I'm going to come up to Modify, Freeze Transformation. Uh, while we're on that, we'll also want to freeze the transformation for both the inner and the outer eyelids so that we don't have the history on that as well. So we'll go Freeze Transformation. Now that we have that, if I grab my eyelid, this is how we're going to be controlling the blinking. So this is going to be all the way closed for the upper eyelid, all the way open for the eyelid, and then all the way open for the bottom eyelid and all the way closed for the open eyelid bottom eyelid so switch those back to zero and zero how we're going to do this is with set driven keys so I need to have this as the driver and this is the driven key so starting off I will select my uh, upper curve two shape come up to my animation menu set, click on animate, set driven key, and set. What this does is it'll open up my set driven key and you'll notice that the curve 2 is loaded in the driven. We actually need that as the driver. So I'm just going to go on load driver and that'll put the curve 2 up. Um, for starters we'll click on the inside shape uh, and click on load driven. You'll notice that we need to adjust the start and end sweeps for the nerve, but it's not located in this list. So what we need to do first is come over to Make Nerve Sphere 2 under the inputs, select that, which uh, shows us the start and end sweep, and then come over to the driven and go Load Driven. You'll now notice that we have the Make Nerve Sphere 2 option box, and inside that we have the start and end sweep. So selecting the Translate Y, and the end sweep, because the end sweep is what's controlling the top part of our eyelid, um, we're going to hit key since it's already open and the eyelid is already open in the max spot that we want. So we can just hit key. You'll notice that our end sweep now uh, turned red or pink. Uh, that indicates that it now has a key con uh, directly uh, controlling it. So before we close the eyelid, we need to make sure that our driver is moved down to its correct correct position. So I'm going to turn that to negative 2. And then we can go into our eye, go into the make nerve sphere 2, click in our end sweep, and what I want to change that to is 460, so 100 degrees uh, over what uh, the normal 360 for the, the closing will be. What this does is instead of stopping it at the uh, 360 degree mark, it actually goes 100 degrees past that and will be at the bottom. 
This allows full control over the eye, so if you need your bottom eyelid to be up higher or your upper eyelid to be lower, you can go over uh, what the standard uh, 360 or 0 degree will be. So having that, I'm going to reselect the translate Y and in sweep and hit key. If I go back to my tool and move this, you can now see that my inside eyelid now adjusts accordingly. So switching this guy back up to its open position, I'm going to do the same thing except for the outer eyelid. So selecting the outer eyelid, coming over to make nerve sphere 1, clicking on load driven, and now loads it into the bottom uh, driver, or driven. Selecting the in sweep and the translate Y, I'll hit key, you'll notice that the color changes. Grabbing my manipulator, moving it down to negative 2 in the closed position, reselecting my outer eye, coming over to make nerve sphere, selecting the 260 for the end sweep and changing it to 460, makes it all the way closed. I'll come back in to translate Y and end sweep, hit key, and now I have my upper eyelid done. So you can see as I move the slider, I have full control over the upper eyelid. So we're going to repeat this process for the lower eyelid. I will select my curve and go load driver. That way we are now using curve 3 as our driver. Select the translate Y. We'll start with the inner eyelid. So we'll come over to make nerve sphere. Go load driven. And this time we're going to be doing the start sweep. So I'll select the start sweep, translate Y, hit key make sure that we move our curve first, so I'm going to move that all the way up to 2. Then selecting our inner eyelid, coming under make nerve. I'm going to change my uh, start sweep to negative 100, and that moved the eyelid all the way down, or all the way up. And then I will select translate Y, start sweep, and key. And now I'll do the same thing for the outside. So I'm going to change that back to zero for the starting position, select my outer eye, make nerve sphere, load driven, start sweep, translate Y, key, select my manipulator, move it up to two, select my outside nerve sphere, change the start sweep to negative 100, translate Y to start sweep, and key. Now I have my full control for my upper and lower eyelid. And since we set up the manipulator so that the pivot point was right at the base of the triangle, you'll know any time that you have your triangles touching each other, that is where the blink is going to happen. So as long as these guys don't go over the, each other, uh, you won't have any uh, issues. And it allows you to have full control over the blinking of your eye. So a few things that we'll want to clean up uh, real quick while we're here is since we're only moving on the Y, we don't actually need any of these other attributes in our channel box. So I'm going to select them, hold right click, and go lock and hide selected. This gets rid of them all and only shows our translate Y. So I'm going to do that for both the upper and the lower. And then for our main unit, we may need to edit it in the future, uh, so I'm just going to go lock selected, that way we can't move it, but it, everything is still visible. Alright, so I am done with the set driven key, so I will close that window. The next stop is to create the inner eyelid, and I will show that to you in part two of the video.